prompt for day nine was fluffy and I did this animation of a hair and a butterfly. So with a more complex shader like this, it's really important to plan out as much as possible early on. I know that I'm gonna need legs, rear legs, front legs, a head and two ears. So I need to really manipulate my mesh to be able to get that geometry in place. Uh, back legs, front legs, ears, they're all uh, starting off symmetrical. So I'm using absolute to position my distance. So I got them both exactly the same place on both each side. And then I'm using the sine SIGN of X um, of the original X to multiply by my displacement vector. And that's allowing me to extrude in both directions. And so I've got, I've got that symmetry there. Um, I've created an extrusion to the knee, uh, the second one to the ankle and the second one to the toe. So this allows me to have uh, control over each limb just as if it was rigged essentially. Um, I just did a little tail there and now I'm trying to work out how to go about this next bit. I started off with front legs but then I decided that actually I was going to need to elongate the torso and get the extra geometry like up into place. So I jumped into side view, did a little sketch over and I've just done these extrusions. wanted to get the torso and the head in place using rotation there. Uh, it's really useful. It's essentially like using proportional editing in edit mode um, and then rotating around a 3D cursor. So I'm able to manipulate the center of the rotation and just push things around a little bit, get my angles right. I've done just the same process as with the back legs, just to pull off two front legs. And now I'm masking out a section so I can rock that head back up into place. A lot of just tweaking things around, making sure I'm not tearing anything. I wanted to uh, extend the muzzle out here, keeping it all quite simple and then pulling the head back up a little bit further. The whole thing was getting pretty large. Uh, I know for my composition, I want to be able to see the sphere as well as the hair without zooming in and out too far. So just scaled the whole thing down there, all of the displacement. Now I'm trying to work out how to get the ears. Uh, to get such a long extrusion from such a small part of geometry, I need to cinch in a whole area. So what I'm doing to begin with is I'm pushing the back of the head forwards, that's compressing some geometry, and then I'm creating this sort of ring of geometry which squeezes in towards the middle. Once I've got those, extra polygons in place, I can pull them upwards without risking tearing anything. And I'm using masks here just to make sure that I've got the left and right ear manipulatable indep independently. So I've got rotation, which I've got my centers right for the, uh, for the base of the ear, just so I'm not twisting them in a weird way. And then I've got a mask for left and right so I can put individual rotations X, Y, Z on each one. You see here, I'm just cutting out a little bit of mesh from underneath, very painful, but necessary. We need this butterfly and I don't want to see a hole. So it's the only place that we can really use for this. To get the shape right, I am using the Y axis as a multiple multiple for the X. And um, so I can make it wider at the front and using RGB curves to give me fine control over that. And then I'm using absolute X to give me a gradient out from the center and using that to control the Z movement of the wings with frame going through a sign, S-I-N-E sign. And that's just going to give me that natural flapping motion. A lot of my animation here is by creating kind of first and last poses. So you can see I'm using a lot of mix RGBs to combine uh, my combine XYZs together. And that gives me a factor between them. I've got a whole load of motions that need to happen simultaneously. So rabbit needs to rock back, stand up slightly. Um, and to stand up, I have to move the body up. I have to move the knees down. Uh, I need to rotate it backwards. I need to rotate the arms down, rotate the head up. And also there's going to be things like the ears rotate forwards. So now I've got the head in the correct position for the upright position. I can put my final, uh, my first and final positions for the butterfly. And then I can also start working on my ear movement. And what you can see I was just doing there was I used linear light to combine color information from a noise texture, one dimensional noise texture from a frame 
and that's allowing me to add a little bit of ongoing variation, kind of secondary animation to the ears so that they wobble around a little bit, a little bit more naturally, um, to the rotation of the head and to the rotation of the forelimbs so that they swing a little bit more naturally without me having to manually animate things. I'm also animating the Z rotation of the head, just putting a frame uh, through a map range and then through an RGB curve so I can control that Z rotation. Getting into the actual texturing now, using a distorted wave texture for the again, the base material and then using masks. So I've got the front section is paler, putting noise over the whole thing, making the, the muzzle lighter. And now I'm putting on eyes, which are just positioned on each side with a color ramp to give me the color. And I've also put that through a bump map so that I've got the rotation and used it as a mask for roughness. So I've got everything else is rough and the eyes are glossy. I uh, made a little crescent shape for the, the nose to indicate something there and also just darkened the top of the bridge and the tips of the ears. Now just masking out a little area to make the insides of the ears a little bit pinker. Didn't have any displacement, they're just kind of convex holes, but I wanted to indicate it with the texturing. Working on the butterfly now, I've got Absolute X to mirror it and put it through a magic node. Uh, so that's giving me this really nice pattern and I've split that into hue and saturation of value and multiplied hue and saturation together to give me something to work with in the color ramp that's a bit more natural. Just working my general overall animation with timing so I'm fading to the sphere and doing the clay wipe correctly. And it's just a lot of iteration going in, tweaking things, tweaking my compositing, making sure things are Things are looking right. I wanted to make it blink. Actually, that's this final thing I'm doing here. So for that, I use a, uh, I create a mask that allows me to open and shut. And then I'm controlling the strength of that mask with a one dimensional noise going through an RGB curve so I can control the pacing of the blink. 